I'll start off with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for giving me the opportunity to preach your word. Um, I pray that that this message would, uh, that someone would just get something from this message and help me to just not be nervous. Um, I want to say what you would want me to say, Lord. I just thank you for this day in Jesus' name. Amen. So right now I'm going to just present the gospel to you all. Uh, the Bible says in Romans 3.23, for all sin can show you the glory of God. So we're all sinners. Um, and if you do not know where you're going when you die, you can know right now. Um, if, you have, if you have accepted Jesus in your life, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you right now. If you're saved, if you do not know, I can show you from the Bible right now where you can be saved and know for sure. Uh, the Bible says in John 14, 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. <clears throat> so the Bible says that he will send the Holy Ghost to you. And we are a three-part, uh, we are three, we are a three-part being, soul, spirit, and flesh, mentioned in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, where it says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body through your families until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that we are to walk in the Spirit, where it says in Galatians 5.16, Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. But why does God want us to walk, live, and be spiritually minded? My first point will be mentioned in John 16. So if you could turn there. Starting in verse 12, it says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For, and for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So the Spirit will guide you into all truth. Um, this flesh, the reason why he wants it is just that this flesh gets away from us. And, and you just try to do something for God, and all of a sudden it just shows up and says, no, I'm you just give an example. Uh, you're out witnessing, and let's say someone gets saved, and then your flesh can think, "Oh, I, I did something in that," and just start talking about it. Like I know that's for me. Like if I start talking to somebody, and I'm like, "Oh, I tell somebody, oh, I witness to somebody," that flesh is like, "No, uh-huh, no, nope, you're just the pride goes up." Yeah. Um, the Bible says in Romans eight five, "They that are after the flesh do the things of the flesh, but." The but they that are after the Spirit do the things of the Spirit. And then I have right here, it says, stay in the Word. Good. You will have the weapons to fight the flesh. And that's why Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 31, I die daily. So deny yourself. And in Galatians 5, 5 16 through 23, it starts, talks about the fruit of the Spirit. And, uh, and it says, and, and these verses also bring up the question, uh, since, we be, since what we look at, uh, and what we think about will eventually become us. What are we putting in front of our eyes? Uh, what are we thinking about? Or what are we thinking of our thoughts? Because to be spiritually minded, you have to put things in front of you that pertain to the Spirit. Um, and the Holy Spirit will determine that from you. And I'm not talking about like a giant big sense. And I'm all, it, it, it can mean that too. Uh, my second point is mentioned in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. So good to be in church. All right, uh, 2 Corinthians 3, 17 through 18 says, Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So God is a Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is a Spirit. But we all, with open, open face, beholding as in glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So my second point is the Holy Spirit will help us become more like Christ. As Christians, it, should, it is our goal to become more like Christ. And not be, and yes, we're supposed to be different from the world, but our main goal is to be more like Christ. Because when we get saved, that transformation will start. And it will never end until we die. As we seek His face in His Word and we continue to read through it day by day, it will transform us. And it will be natural. Like when you study something, it will become part of you. Like in college, if I study something over and over and over and over, it'll become ingrained in me. So you gotta be careful. The Bible should be ingrained in you. Yes. And it's a relationship; it never stops. We never reach 
full Christ likeness because we're, we're sinful humans, we're flesh. We're all sin to come short of the glory of God. Uh, my last point is in Romans 8, chapter 8, chapter 8 verse 14. Romans 8.14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye that for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry out the Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The Holy Spirit will testify of Christ through us. And in Galatians chapter 5, uh, verse 22 through 23 it says, For the Spirit of for the spirit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, goodness, gentleness, meekness, temperance. But against such there is no law. Christians should be the happiest and the most forgiving, most loving, most joyful, most peaceful people on the planet because we've got all the answers to the world's problems. Um, and if you love the Lord um, and you're doing the things that mentioned earlier, you'll show fruit. You'll be more loving. You'll be you'll be showing the fruit like in Galatians chapter five verse twenty two. Now is it now is it natural? Once we begin to read the word, yes, it'll become more natural. Um, and then my last, so in conclusion, uh, God gives the Holy Spirit for three purposes: to guide us into all truth, to become more like Christ, and to testify of Himself through us, because that's what we're here on this earth for. We're to testify of Him through our lives.